Hello, delighted to be talking to David Hayter, Canadian actor, screenwriter, director and producer, most recently on Netflix's Warrior Nun. How the devil are you, David? I'm excellent. I'm excellent. Thank you. Thank you for having me back on the show. And um, yeah, we. Uh, I just got back. Uh, I was living in Madrid for six months producing Warrior Nun Season 2. Mm. And uh, uh-oh, I knocked out my camera, but I'm coming back shortly. Okay. And um, yeah, everything, things couldn't be too much better. It's, it's, uh, it's a good time to be me, mm, as usual. How did it go? Is that wrapped up now, season two? What are you doing? <clears throat> uh, well, shooting is wrapped up and we're into post now. So, um, so that will take, uh, take some time. I think we're looking at um, hopefully uh, summer 2022 for the season to come out. Okay, you've been working as a producer and writer. Are you involved with the editing on that as well, David? Um, well, they send me the they send me the cuts, and I give them uh, I give them my thoughts. And um, uh, I'm not in the editing room, but I but I'm giving notes from uh, from a distance. Hmm. <laughs> you mentioned our backgrounds behind it. Your W films. I, I didn't realize we didn't do that on purpose. Oh no, not at all. Yes, <laughs> uh, there's also uh, there's also wolves and. Oh, of course. X-Men, I seem to I seem to work at the at the lower end of the alphabet. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you know pharmaceutical company? I, I worked for a pharmaceutical company for many years, can't say pharmaceutical. And they mm -hmm. deliberately started their their make painting medicines with beginning with either A, beginning with the alphabet, or you know, their their NZ, because mm -hmm. they know doctors either open the boot or they flick through it immediately. Right. To get to right. the back. You might your dad, Stephen Hater, he was involved in the same. Yeah, he was an executive for uh, Abbott Diagnostics for uh, for many many years, and they are the company that moved us around every every six months or a year of my life. So, uh, uh, which was a grand adventure, and paid him pretty well. Yeah. So yes, I'm a pharmaceutical brat. <laughs> <laughs> David, I know I said on Twitter that the first question I'd ask you, pretty open question. Do you think that screenwriters get the credit they they deserve? Um. Well, sometimes, sometimes they get the credit they don't deserve. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, do they get the credit they deserve? The, the screenwriting credit um, system is uh, complex and, and somewhat capricious. It's, uh, you know, typically, especially on like big films, uh, like the ones I've worked on, you know, you have a number of different writers and when the credits come out, there's usually an arbitration with the Writers Guild and everybody submits their drafts and says, well, I wrote this and I wrote this and I added this to the project and so on and so forth. And then uh, a panel of three anonymous writers decides, you know, well, I think these people deserve credit. Okay. And sometimes uh, that process works well and sometimes it, it uh, doesn't. And, um, you know, it can be a really, uh, frustrating um, system, uh, but now we just the Writers Guild literally like like yesterday passed a thing um, called additional literary materials, which means if you have worked on a film at all as a writer, at the end there'll be a section that says additional literary materials by and list all the writers who have uh, worked on it. So if that you don't get screenplay credit. Yeah. Um, but you are mentioned in the credits and, you know, that goes on your uh, IMDb page. Okay. And um, I, I don't know if you saw my tweet the other day, but I was yep. like, you know, if, yep. if we had had this throughout my career, I'd be listed on six other giant movies yeah. um, because, uh, you know, because I do script work on, on a lot of big movies and sometimes you get the credit, sometimes you don't. So now... Um, uh, for example, like I worked on the Voltron movie over at DreamWorks Animation, and I don't know if that's going forward or not, but what eventually when it does, um, either I'll get screenplay credit or I'll get an additional literary materials mention in the movie. So it's, uh, so the process is getting better. Okay. Is the, is the short answer to. Yeah. I know you've replied to a, a tweet I put out the other night about the opening scene in X-Men, the original mm -hmm. film, the first one, that yeah. was absolutely brilliant. One of the best backstories, yeah. you know, immediately you feel sympathy, you feel for this guy who yeah. becomes sort of the anti-hero. 
but you admitted that you, the, you didn't the, actually the, write the that Magneto, yeah. yeah, the Magneto, uh, <laughs> young Magneto in, in Auschwitz. Uh, yeah. No, that scene was um, before, just before I came on board uh, to work on the film, my friend Christopher McQuarrie uh, had done a pass and came up with that scene and a few other really brilliant um, uh, moments that, that, that remain in the film. And uh, yeah, we all, I mean, I think the studio was really nervous about opening a superhero movie in, in Auschwitz. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was certainly very edgy and, and risky, but we all knew uh, the moment we saw that scene that, you know, that's truly brilliant and groundbreaking. And yeah, uh, and yeah you totally, and that's the point of Magneto is he's not wrong. You know, he's, he's saying like these people are going to kill us as a group and we need to fight back. And so it's the, um, you know, it's the Magneto, uh, Professor Xavier balance you know, do you do you fight with the humans? Do you fight against the humans? Like everybody's got a pretty decent point, and uh, and that scene really, yeah, encapsulates it for the audience very very clearly. I, I watched that in the cinema back in two thousand, and uh, watching it again the other night, the hair is still standing up on my hand, in the back of my not my hand, <laughs> my arm. <laughs> yeah, well, where wherever they're standing up, you know, that's that's the important <laughs> thing. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, well, it was you know be beautifully directed and <laughs> and. Uh, very well written. Yeah, exactly. That's, um, I was going to ask you, sort of linking back with the, the credit that writers get deserve. You were paid something miserable fee, what, $35,000, was it, for an $80 million movie? Correct. Yes, that's right. Wow. Yeah, the lowest, the lowest paid writer of an $80 million film in history. That's right. And, and, yeah, and you were awarded you know, the, the Saturn Award for writing for this film? I was. There, there it is up there. Ah, there beautiful. It is. Yeah. Next to my Batman mask. Um, in a place of honor, uh, I was. Yeah, I won. I won uh, best best screenplay, which was very very cool. And um, yeah, well, once I got the credit, uh, the screenplay credit, then I got paid considerably more in, in residuals and and uh, in a new brand new screenwriting career. And so, so you should. That all, year, all good. The, your your screenwriting for X Men that won that year over Gladiator movie. And it puts you in the company with other writers like Tarantino, like Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, like a, a certain Mr. Spielberg. They're, yeah, you know, they're, yes. they're, they're all the no. winners of this award. Oh, well, that's an impressive, uh, certainly an impressive list of people to be mentioned with. I don't think it, I don't think I'm quite at, at their level. Uh, uh, you know, those are, the, those are the geniuses of our business and, and I am in awe of them uh, as much as anyone else. But, uh, but nice to be, uh, Nice to be mentioned in such auspicious company. So. <laughs> David, can we jump forward from maybe, well, we started at the year 2000, maybe jump forward throughout your career up to, up to date, we don't mind. Of course. Okay. So uh, from, from um, X-Men, you wrote then next, was it X-Men 2? Was that straight after? Well, my first job after X-Men was writing, uh, I got hired to write the Pitch Black sequel um, and you know, I, I needed a job because I'd been paid so little on X-Men. And, and uh, so they, they came to me with this offer. But then I was like, well, I wrote X-Men. I don't want to be writing Pitch Black 2. So I said, why don't, we, why don't we change it to the Chronicles of Riddick and just like turn this into a giant franchise and try to, you know, I was just trying to make it a bigger deal than uh, it was. And so they, they liked that. Uh, and I wrote this, this pretty awesome movie. But then it was uh, rewritten. Um, by a big screenwriter who shall remain nameless and uh, and ruined, and then uh, and then uh, and then the original writer director David Tui came in and he sort of took the idea of the Chronicles of Riddick and made his own uh, wrote his own uh, draft from the ground up. So so what came out was not the movie I wrote, but that was my that was my second job. And then after that, actually at the same time, they offered me uh, uh, the Hulk, Ang Lee's uh, Hulk. So oh, yeah. I I did uh, I worked on that for for about a year. And the Ed Norton version, the Eric Bana version. Oh, sorry, I'm not thinking about Norton. The, the, the whole two thousand three version. Ah, yeah, two thousand three. Yeah. Oh, okay, correct. But again, that one was completely rewritten, and and there's a few elements that I I added to it, but uh, not too many. Okay, me, me and George, we had a we had a chat before. You came online, and George mentioned the fact that you'd written the, the, the Riddick film, which I didn't know about. Yeah, 
uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, again, if it was, you know, if it was, uh, if we had the additional literary materials credit, then I would have gotten that credit on that movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jumping forward now to 2009, you wrote the screenplay for Watchmen. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I got the deal in 2001. Um, mm. And then I worked on it for, for nine years and what? I guess eight years. And uh, yeah, four different studios, four different directors. I've been knocking my camera again. Um, and uh, yeah, that was an epic, uh, an epic time trying to get that movie made. Yeah. In between then, you became um, involved in video games. Um, well, no, I, I was involved in video games. Well, frankly, I, I, I did my first voices for video games in 1985. Yeah. Uh, so I've basically been doing voices in video games since they've invented video games. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, but in 1998, I got, uh, the lead role in Metal Gear Solid. So then I became Solid Snake and, uh. <laughs> And that was, yeah, so I did that in 98 and I wrote X-Men in 99. So it yeah. was, it was like two, two giant breaks, hmm. um, pretty much on top of each other. And that was a, that was a pretty good, a well, pretty good era in my history, I have to say. Hmm. But me and George, we worked together. When I mentioned to George, I was speaking to David Hayter. Um, I said, you know, why did I have X-Men? But as soon as I said uh, Metal Gear, <laughs> you knew exactly yeah. what I was talking about. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's such an iconic game, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were all, yeah. I mean, I did, I think I did nine games and um, yeah. they were all pretty uh, groundbreaking and visionary. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I was very lucky to, you know, I, I, I had initially come to Hollywood to be an action star and wanted to be, you know, Tom Cruise or Harrison Ford or something. And, uh, and I'm really happy that my career went the way that it did. You know, I love being a screenwriter. I love being a producer and uh, directing and all, all of that. Um, but have, getting to play Snake was, was sort of a payoff of that dream anyway. I got to be this iconic action hero and, and um, you know, and I'm a lot better known for that than I am for the screenwriting in terms of the general public. So, so it's kind of cool. I get, a, I get a cool level of, of, of fame out of that. Okay. I was looking back at, um, I'm going back in time now too, I think it was 1984-ish, Guyver. I was watching that. No, no, no. Uh, no. It would have been 15. Um, oh. No, it was uh, 1993. It came out, I think. I need to, I need to read my own notes. That, I was looking back today on YouTube. Two million views that's had on YouTube, Guyver. Oh, it, really? Well, people yeah. should be paying to see it, actually. Do, do you know what? That, that's in terms of getting the writing credit at YouTube. You know, they, they pay, don't they? You can monetize the channel. And you're, you're obviously part right. of that. Uh, yeah, well, I don't, I don't own Guyver. I'm just in Guyver. So it's, I don't, uh, they paid me a flat fee at the time, which I, uh, which okay. I, I blew on a new car and, and yeah. uh, <laughs> that money's long gone. Shows the car. <laughs> hey, what's the new car you got now, Tesla? You're not friends with Mr. Uh, Musk, are you? So thank, thank you, Mr. I'm, Musk. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, but I'm <laughs> friends with Grimes, uh, the huh? mother of his child. Oh, so yeah. uh, uh, I no, I just called him out on the tweet in the hopes that he would like, you know, make my car faster over over the internet or something. <laughs> um, not that it needs to be faster. Yes, I bought a, I got a, a Tesla Model Three Performance, um, which is the fastest car I have ever owned, yeah. and it's just insanely fun to drive. Yeah. Well, have you got a plug or something? Did you plug it into the electric mains from your house? Yep. Yeah, I've got a I've got a little gazebo and it's got a plug, and I just plug it in and. Stays charged all the time. It's great fun. Yeah, yeah. enormously fun car. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> so, and it's so I, I can't I can't express to you how fast this car is. <laughs> like <laughs> like I could be sitting at a at a streetlight next to a Lamborghini and just smoke them. It's it's really uh, yeah yeah it's zero it does wow. zero to sixty in three point one seconds. Oof. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's it you hit the accelerator. It's like the world is coming to an end. It's uh, yeah. it's something else. Really incredible. I'd never have thought of an electric car. I don't know why I've got in my mind, you know, the old image of an electric car, you know, we're a bit sluggish going uphill and yeah, not, not well, that's, power. Well, that's how they used to be, but uh, but actually the electric car provides instant massive torque. And so um, you know, like the Tesla model plaid yeah. 
yeah. does zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. Oof, what? Ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. Wow. It's faster than a super bike. Yeah. Oh, like a lightning. I'm sorry. No, that's the Tesla Roadster that's coming out. But the model plaid does it in like 2.3 seconds or something. Okay. These cars yeah. are incredibly powerful. Yeah. Oh. Brilliant. Hey, back, I'm jumping around here, but um, going back to 2014, Wolves, the Wolves yep. film. I watched, I watched that today, actually. Oh, yeah. J- Jason Momoa, <laughs> is, that your, is he still, you're still friends with him? I know the last chat we had, you, you tell us about his, uh, his wolf and his, and his barbecues. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's got his wolf, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen him for for a while, but I last saw him at a comic con, and um, we're friends, and he's uh, he's just he's a very sweet guy. I mean, he's massive and yeah. he's intense. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 last I saw him, we were at this comic con, and he had bought two swords. And so he was like playing with one of them and I was playing with another one. And I was like, Hey, you know, Momoa, he's like, you got any sword training like this? As, as the, and he like turned around and he was like, are you kidding me? Like this, cause, he, Cause he was Conan, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was like, yes, I'm kidding you. I, I'm not going to sword fight with you. You're yeah. oh, how tall, how tall, how tall is he? Six foot six, is he? Six, five. Six, five. Yeah. Six, five, you know, 225 maybe 230 pounds of yeah. just sheer muscle. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I told this story, but, but it, it's on YouTube. I, I did a, a, a Comic-Con panel with him in, at San Diego for Wolves and I introduced him and, uh, and I'm six foot one, about 185 pounds. And he came out, ran up on stage, grabbed me by the waist and then lifted me up in the air and went wonk, wonk, wonk like that. And <laughs> like I was an eight year old child. It was, it was really something else. And uh, that guy is just, he's a very powerful man. Yeah. Was that his first major film role? I know he was in a Baywatch version, wasn't he? In the television series. Um, no, he, well, he'd already done Conan and he, you know, Started. he'd been on, on Game of Thrones of course, and, yeah. um, and, you know, Game of Thrones had made him huge. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so no, we were, we were very lucky to get him. I, I think it was just a matter of, you know, uh, we paid him a good fee to come up to Canada for, for 16, 17 days and just be the baddest <laughs> werewolf in history. And, and, uh, <laughs> Uh, and it was great. We had a we had a great time. I mean, you know, nobody really saw the movie, and the cut that came out is not is not my cut. But um, uh, but we really had a great time doing it. And I think Jason is amazing in the movie. Yeah. Did you have regrets about that? Not have more control over the edit not on that film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the, I was like, you know, I want final cut, and the producer was like, well, I have final cut, so essentially that means you have final cut. But then uh, they recut it. Uh, anyway, yeah. David, I was going to ask you just with you mentioning how fast your car was, it reminds me that you're on the Flash as well, playing King Shark. And I yes. was wondering what does My your car voice is sound like? Than the Flash, is it? <laughs> yeah. No, wow. I, don't, I don't think I don't think that's true. I'm sorry. What was your question, George? So, what does your voice sound like in its raw form when doing a King Shark voice? I was wondering what it sounds. Oh yeah, like. yeah. Well, it's pretty processed. So you, um, the voice is. Uh, Where's the flash? <laughs> Zoom That's watch, brilliant. you dead. Like, uh, Fantastic. Sort of, and then like, <laughs> yeah. it like makes all these sounds like a, like a bull or, you know, mm. some giant nine foot tall creature. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, but that voice is really hard. That's the, that's the hardest. Uh, uh, that's that voice is the hardest on my vocal cords that, that I do. So. Oh, okay. I can't, I can't do it for more than like 20 minutes or I'll lose my voice. Yeah. yeah. Does Snake come naturally to you now? Because you've done it for so many years now. Oh, yeah. Plus, yeah. I just, uh, the older I get, the more I naturally sound like Snake anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can, yeah, I can do that. I can do that all day. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> oh. D- D- Dave, can we talk about the, um, the Fox uh, studio? You were commissioned to write World War Three. This, this epic drama I wa- yeah i was uh and i did yeah. um <laughs> that one it's so funny people ask me about that all the time i think that the title is very compelling yeah um, yeah uh yeah we 
yeah, that was a weird one. We we went and Fox said, this is great. We're going to give it to our event miniseries department. Um, and so I worked on it, uh, you know, probably about a year. Mm. And, uh, and then when I handed in the final draft, they said, oh, well, we've shut down our event miniseries department. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, so that was it. And then, and then we, we were sort of, you know, we were a project without an executive. And, and yeah. so, uh, so it just sort of died. Did you get paid Had for it? it? What I got paid, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, I would have loved for people to see it. It's, you know, it's really frustrating mm. to, you know, put so much work into mm. these things and then they just disappear. Um, yeah. But that's part of, I mean, that's definitely part of being a, a professional screenwriter. I mean, you know, the things that you work on, there's a small percentage of those that, that get made and get seen. Yeah. That's just yeah. the nature of the business. I've read um, William Goldman's book, Adventures in the Screen Trade, and he, yeah, there's enough those are great quotes. It's, it's brilliant, isn't it? But he talks about uh, as soon as the studio gets a new head in, they ditch all the projects that you know are lined up in, in commission just because mm -hmm. they're the new boss, because they're the new big badass in town. Uh, well, not just because of that. It's because if they spend $150 million on somebody else, a movie somebody else did, and it's terrible, they get the blame. If they make it and it's great, yep. they don't get the credit. Oh, okay. You know, they say, yep. oh, it was the sense. previous executive that, that, yeah. that put that into. So there's very little upside um, for a new studio head to make somebody else's uh, slate, hmm. um, which is a bummer. It, sh it shouldn't be that way. It should just be whatever the best movie is, you know, hmm. should get made, but that's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, um, uh, we were making Watchmen with Paul Greengrass directing in, in uh, at Paramount uh, in 2006. Mm. And, um, and we were ready to go. We were starting to cast. We were building sets. Like we, it, was, it was going. And then Sherry Lansing uh, left as the head of Paramount and Brad Gray came in. And, uh, and yeah, and then two weeks later, we were dead. They, he killed the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, were you drafted in on a late date for The Scorpion King? Yes. So you were flown in at the last minute. They built this castle somewhere in the desert. That's that's with, right. Yeah, we. Um, yeah, we. Uh, so it was The Rock's first starring role in a movie, and um, they. I so I had been writing uh, Riddick and The Hulk for Universal, and then Mary Parent. Uh, she was not the president of Universal yet, but she she said, "Look, we're filming this movie." Um, in three weeks, can I send you the script and tell me what you think? And so I was like, sure. So they sent me the script and I was like, you know, I, it could be better. And, and um, so I wrote, uh, so I wrote a two page outline and just said, I would do this, this, and this. And they said, great. And they hired me, um, they hired me on a weekly, which means they pay you just a, a just an ugly, ugly sum of money for, uh, uh, for a few weeks worth of work. And it was really, really fun. I got to work with The Rock and come up with action scenes and <laughs> Uh, I got to go to a party with The Rock, which was pretty cool. It's hard work, isn't it? Just everybody, everybody, you know. I was I went to this party at this big producer's house, and I ran into to Dwayne Johnson on the way in, and he's like, "Hey, you know, like this." And so, so we walked in together, and like, there was like Pacino was at this party, and Eddie Murphy, and like all these huge names, and everybody stopped when The Rock walked yep. in. <laughs> and he wasn't you know wasn't a huge star yet but he yeah. but he's just such a presence you know yeah, yeah. and uh and so that was that was pretty cool is he as big as jason is he is the same height or is he just wider and bigger i think he's a little bigger um i think maybe he's six five as well but he's just massive i mean yeah. he's, just his body is weird. i mean at the time he was massive now he's even bigger i mm. you know he's a, yeah. he's a man mountain yeah I did. I did the table read, sitting between Dwayne Johnson and Michael Clark Duncan, mm. uh, if you know who he is, and and uh, he's sadly passed away now. But he was. They were both so enormous. I, I it was like sitting between two buildings, you know, and I was <laughs> afraid someone was going to fall over and crush me. Yeah. Uh, no, no disrespect to Tom Cruise. I'm thinking of uh, the Jack Reacher character, that Lee Child, mm. the novelist. He's written about 15 novels. Um, yeah. In the novels, Jack Reach is six foot six. You know, he's an ex major. Yeah, he's a, he's a, a huge uh, bruiser. And Tom Cruise, you know, brilliant actor and things, but he's just, I don't think he's got the presence. He certainly hasn't got the, the, the stature, the height of that. No, but he, 
he gets a movie made. Yeah. So true, true. you know, if you're yeah. if you're adapting the books and mm. the worst you can do is Tom Cruise, well, yeah, you're, yeah, it's not, it's not you're doing all right. It. Yeah, yeah. You know? That sounds like a, a sort but of I know, a, but a petty I, but criticism. I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, it's a valid criticism. I know, you know, a lot of people felt that way who who love the character and yeah. you know, he's supposed to be this giant, this giant guy. Um but you know, it was the same. We got the same complaints about uh, Hugh Jackman being too tall to play Wolverine. You know, Wolverine's supposed to be like five foot five and it's like yeah. a little fire plug of a guy, yeah. and Hugh is six foot two. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, you you have to get a movie star to to play the role and that, to open the film. Yeah, that won't necessarily always match up with the uh, the literary description. Yeah, I, I thought Hugh Jackman character was absolutely perfectly cast for Wolverine. Was that his first major film? I know he's been in Australian oh, yeah. dramas, television. Yeah, soaps. he had done he had done some uh, he had done some smaller films, and <laughs> in fact, a friend of mine just reminded me that the the moment you know, so we were there the moment that Hugh got offered the job. Yeah. Brian Singer just went up to him and said, "So you know, do you want do you want the job?" And it's like, yeah, mate, like this, and shook his hand. And then he immediately, Hugh said to um, Ralph Winter, our, our producer, he's like, um, Ralph, uh, you know, I really want to do this, but uh, I've got this little film I'm supposed to do in Australia. Like, and uh, Ralph was like, we'll take care of it. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they did or if they bought out the film or, you know, um, but Hugh was so sweet and he was worried about, this, you know, this little film in Australia that he yeah. committed to and yeah. where they worked it all out. Yeah, exactly. he came in and he was amazing. He, he defined that, he defined the role of Wolverine. Hmm. That's a great Australian accent there, by the way. I, I, I was, I was oh, your, yeah, you know, well, how was your Liverpool you. accent? Yeah, yeah, John Lennon. Last oh, summer. Liverpool. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I can do, I can do a bit of a, a John Lennon, but uh, it's not, uh, beyond that, it's not great. <laughs> David, could you, do, <laughs> could, could you do him an introduction for this? It, I don't know. All right, this is this is chat from the Green Hills. Then your your Liverpool accent. Chat from the Green Hills. <laughs> this is yeah. This is David Hater, and you're listening to a chat from the Green Hills. Can you tell by the accents? <laughs> <laughs> what, what old scouts here? Actually, George is from uh, George is Czech. George is multilingual. Yeah. Oh, nice. Public, yeah. Oh, nice. Which, Brings me to my question, actually, because I know you speak Japanese fluently. Ah, and no, I, I speak believe... Japanese conversationally. I, I'm okay. certainly not fluent, <laughs> but I can, I can get by. Okay. Now, was it about age 17 that you went to Japan and started learning? Oh, I was 16. I had just 16, 16 uh, when did, I went, yeah. Did you find it difficult to learn the language? Um, I found the transition to living in Japan difficult. Uh, you know, the... I was sort of taken from my home in Canada and I had a girlfriend and I had friends. And so I was really bitter about, about moving to Japan mm -hmm. um, for the first six months. And then, uh, and then I met a new girl who uh, was Japanese and didn't speak any English. And then I was motivated to pick up the language very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and after I did, um, it changed the whole experience entirely. I didn't feel so lost and so alien. In fact, I'm wearing my Hanshin Tigers oh, so T-shirt. This was this was the baseball <laughs> team, the local baseball team in Kobe, okay. uh, where I where I grew up. And uh, so, yeah, once I once I learned the language and realized that at 16, 17, I could go to the dance clubs and drink and party all night, um, it became an entirely different experience. <laughs> Brilliant. Mm. David, can I ask you about a, a link that you've got on your Twitter page? This, um, where are we? This cameo link. Can you tell, cameo, tell me yeah. what, what that's about? Yeah, well, cameo, cameo is a um, video uh, stream, uh, service where you can uh, look up the various celebrities and say, "Oh, I'll pay," you know. A bunch of money to William Shatner to wish my friend a happy birthday or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if William Shatner's on it, but but there's all sorts of celebrities who are on it, and uh, and I'm one of them. Yeah. So people want me pretty much exclusively to um, wish their friends happy birthday or yeah. a happy marriage or or what have you. 
or just a pep talk in the solid snake voice. Yeah. Yeah. So I started doing these, uh, I guess about three years ago now, and I do about a thousand a year. Um, and it's really grinding me down to a nub. Um, <laughs> but so I have to do, you know, so I have to do snake um, at least three or four cameos per week, usually, you know, more like 10. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, you know, and I'm, I, it's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it sounds, you know, simple and stupid, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a bit of a grind to do. I've done nearly 3000 of them now. And you have to personalize and, all of them. You can't yeah. Just like well, I've got them. a, I've got a basic script that I do. Yeah. That's got like a bunch of metal gear jokes in it. And I sort of change that up each time. And people give me, you know, you can write in and say, can you say this? Or can you, you know, specifically they like this or this, this. So, yeah. So I try I try to personalize it. And, um, uh, but the, but the money of it is so good that I feel like stupid not wanting to do it. I'm like, but it's so, yeah. you know, it's 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 it really sort of wears me down. But at the same time, I'm like, but it pay, it literally pays my pays for my home mortgage and my car uh, on cameos alone. So yeah. it's um, that's weird. So it's what we it's what we call the golden handcuffs. Basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how do people get in touch? I know you got a link there on the cameo. Was it the, a cameo yeah, website? Click, yeah, yeah. You just click the link and it takes you to my page and yeah. say, you know, um, I think it's uh, ninety five dollars hmm. for a cameo from me, and I'll send you a message for your for your friend or your friends are getting married or they're having a baby or or what have you. Yeah. And then, and then people ask me to say all sorts of crazy, rude <laughs> crap, and you know, or they want me to quote movies, or they want me to read speeches from you know movies, and I'm like, I, I don't, I don't do that. But uh, mm. top um, of your head, what's one of the crazier ones that you've had? Um, well, I mean, I've been asked a number of times to ask women to marry other men, uh, so that's weird. Okay. Yeah. Um, and usually I'll, I'll do that. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I don't know. You know, this is just weird inside jokes that people want you to do and say all mm. sorts of weird stuff, but, uh, nothing, nothing leaps to mind immediately, but, but it, it's a lot of weird stuff. Mm. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> David, I know that the, the sound's running down and we won't keep you on much longer. Is it, look, any truth in this room about uh, this daredevil? I know you've, you've, no, I, no, I, you know, Is everybody asking you that. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know if they're asking me, but it's just, I get Google alerts for my name and it's just all over the internet. You know, people are like, you know, X-Men writer confirms daredevil reboot. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I, I thought I had read in the trades that it was happening. And I was like, oh, that's great. Cause I love daredevil. Uh, somebody was asking me what character I'd love to write for. And, and, you know, daredevil is one of my favorites uh, from when I was a kid. And so I said, well, they're, you know, they're doing this, this, uh, this Marvel reboot. And so it just exploded and people are like, David Hayter confirmed it. And I'm like, no, I didn't confirm. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. I, it was a surprise to me that it wasn't already a thing. Yeah. And then at that same Comic-Con, Deborah Ann Wall, uh, who plays Karen Page on, on the Daredevil show, I, I, I was sitting in the airport lounge with her and I said, so, you know, the Daredevil's getting a reboot. And she's like, oh, is it? And I'm like, no, I, I don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I know nothing, um, you know, rumors are, are coming out. Uh, something came out the other day about a, a casting call for Daredevil. Um, but I don't know if that's true or yeah. not. I, I know, I literally know nothing. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, you would, you would jump at the chance, I presume. If you begin. Oh, I love, I love Daredevil. And, yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, I would love to, I would love to uh, take a, take a crack at that. Okay. Okay. Well, David, I, I was going to say thank you very much for your time once again. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I think you're very That's generous pleasure. with your time. Well, the pleasure's all mine. You always ask such such great questions and really? get into you know strange and interesting aspects of my career. So I I, uh, I appreciate that immensely, and I I hope you both uh, have an extremely good day. Thank you very thank much, you. and I hope hope you do too. Thank Thanks, you, David. Sir. Cheers. All right, guys. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Bye, Bye now. See you later. Bye-bye.
Hey, John, still on? I'm still on, yeah. Yeah. What a guy. Yeah, I'm going to say, let's stop the recording. Uh,